And he introduces me to Garrett and I'm just like, oh my God, who is this old creepster that's totally <laughs> creeping on me? <laughs> that's what Charlene thought too. Yeah, so yeah. we're good. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Andy. <laughs> You're very excited this morning. <laughs> yes, just a bit. Yeah. There's some fun backstory regarding our Love Fest guests today. Mm -hmm. And it all started with our anniversary episode where you revealed your obsession with big waves and how you watch videos of waves every night before going to sleep. Yes, <laughs> yes. This all started when I was I was probably four or five years old. I was at the beach with my dad. And I was, you know, there was like little waves and I was just running back and forth. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Like the wave comes, it goes. And then there was probably like a mini rogue wave. It was like no more than three, a maximum four feet tall. But to me at that age, it was enormous. Okay. And I didn't know whether to go to it or go back. And I was like, oh my God, this is bad. Yeah. And then it just obliterated me. <laughs> okay. Like I was, I mean, you know, he's, he's laughing. I know this is a joke. <laughs> But I was like underwater for a while. My face was getting like smashed into the sand. And that was it. I was obsessed. Like <laughs> the primordial terror of this wall of water rolling inexorably from the horizon towards you. I've dreamt about it. I've had nightmares about it. I've watched, uh, I've read many books about it. I've watched movies about it. Yes, many YouTube videos. Many YouTube videos, feature... many of which <laughs> feature the living legend, Big Wave Surfer, who is our guest today. Yeah, yes. So we'll start with Garrett, obviously. Garrett McNamara is the eight-time Guinness World Record holder for the largest wave ever surfed. Mm -hmm. Wrap your mind around that for a second. Mm -hmm. This was most recently done in Nazare, Portugal, where they join us from today. Single-handedly, he turned what was a tiny fishing town into the big wave surfing epicenter of the world. No big deal. His wife, Nicole, has degrees in science and environmental studies. She teaches yoga and is an Ayurvedic health consultant and a passionate environmentalist, which I love. And together... You probably know this, but they star in HBO's hit docu-series, 100 Foot Wave, which just got renewed for a second season. Congratulations. Yeah. Very exciting. And the show not only features Garrett's incredible surfing story, but also highlights the fact that behind every great man is a great woman. We're so thrilled that you guys are joining us today. We have so many questions about your relationship. Thank you so much, Thank Garrett you. and Nicole Thank McNamara. You. Thank you for having us. I have to say, I'm most excited about this podcast because most of the time it is just about big waves and how we did it. And all that. How did it feel? <laughs> <laughs> thinking. Nice to be talking about something else. <laughs> right. I, I wouldn't want to ask those questions at all. <laughs> yeah, we were going through the questions. And I'm like, Andy, mm -mm. we're a relationship I, podcast. I had like literally a list of a hundred <laughs> big wave questions and I cut it down to two, which I'm going to ask probably off the podcast yeah. after we're done recording. We'll find a way for Andy to get his questions in. <laughs> anyway. But before we begin, I just have to tell you, Andy has met many a famous person in his life and I've never seen him get as starstruck as meeting you, Garrett. So thank you oh, so wow. much for joining thank us. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so we're going to start nice and easy from the very beginning. And mm -hmm. I know you touched on this in 100 Foot Wave, but I'd love to hear you talk about and focus on how you met. And then, of course, we're going to have many questions based on that. That's the hardest question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How come you guys are sitting so far away from each other? <laughs> No one's ever asked that. Because <laughs> we don't love each other, Gary. We don't love each other. <laughs> he probably can't keep his hands off you. I got it. I got it. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> it, it's a camera angle thing, but that was hilarious. No one has ever asked us that. I knew we'd get a weird question from him. I knew it. Yeah. Good right job. Off the bat. Good deflection. Yeah. Anyway, now yeah. answer your question. <laughs> uh, Bam. Well, Puerto Rico. We met in Puerto Rico. That's, that's okay. the end of the story. <laughs> that's what, it? Oh, so you're avoiding I did them ask them. To, I did ask them to cut out that one, like, blurt out in the show, and they refused to cut it out. So I really suppose now we need to explain it. <laughs> you know, I want you to talk about what you feel comfortable talking about. No, 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 I'm good. What struck me when you did blurt that out in the show was the clarity with which you said it. Uh, well, you know, if, that was a thing. Like, it was so clear for both of us that 
there was really, truly like no other option. Yeah. There's something there was, powerful about that. There was no other way life would have existed. It just couldn't have been possible. Okay. So, and I was there for a, a charity event. We were taking autistic children surfing. And the night before the event. Well, and I was there for a stand-up paddleboard um, race. So I was doing long distance stand-up board racing. And wow. there was a race in Puerto Rico. And I was staying with um, one of my dad's friends who's like, the big wave surfer of Puerto Rico. And, Ernie, um, Ernie Alvarez. He happens to be a florist who was doing the flowers for the charity event that Garrett was at. And I'm a very homebody. I don't go out. I'm very shy. I'm like the wallflower. And he's like, come on, come to the event. I'm like, there's absolutely no way I'm going. I refuse to go. And then his girlfriend's like, come on, you can borrow my dress. I'll do your hair, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm just like, oh my God, this I'll is put awful. some crazy pheromone stuff on you that'll mess my <laughs> Because man. at this time, she was actually, uh, you know, like Tupperware party, Tupperware, but for like <laughs> sex toys, <laughs> that's what we were dealing with here. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I have this pheromone stuff you got to put on. And I'm like, oh my God. It was so out of like character for me to even allow this to happen. But I went and I'm sitting there all by myself, minding my own business at a table while everybody else was socializing. And Ernie calls me over and Garrett's there. And he introduces me to Garrett and I'm just like, oh my God, who is this old creepster that's totally <laughs> creeping on me? <laughs> that's what Charlene thought too. Yeah, so yeah. we're good. Yeah. <laughs> he did like this weird, like he shook my hand and did like this weird like peck. I'm just like, oh my God. So <laughs> what is happening? Nice move. And <laughs> the Hawaiian style. But then tell your version from there. What was my version? Well, he saw me from across the room and he had to <laughs> Yeah, did you walk over to talk to her? She was uh, way on the other side of the room and I noticed that Ernie had just walked from being by her. And uh, I'm like, who's that over there? And he's like, ho, ho, ho. And he's like, go. And so she came over and um, that's when we introdu introduced each other. And um, yeah, when I saw her pass the room, she was so beautiful. I was just mesmerized from the first sight. Oh, that's lovely. And then the pheromones kicked in. <laughs> well, like, that put me on, it turned me into one of those cartoon like, characters, like, you know, getting dragged across the room with <laughs> on his tippy toes flying, you know. So what were your first impressions of each other? You know, you're she thinks you're an old creepster. You think she's stunning. Like you talk for, I think an hour, right? You talk for that, a while. That initial one was just like one minute. I'm just like, this is like, and I went back to my seat and then the night went on because it was like this full charity dinner thing. And then after dinner, there was a reggae band. So I was standing there again by myself, just minding my own business. Listening to the I saw her band. peeking at the creepy old guy. No, I never did. <laughs> oh, no, I got to hide. <laughs> there he is. Garrett comes be bopping over. And his line was, do you serve? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 Garrett, for shame. <laughs> Lucky I said it soft enough to where she couldn't hear me. Yeah, so I'm like, I leaned over and I think I sat next to him because I'm like, what did you say? Because it was obviously loud, there's music. And he mm. said, oh, do you surf? And somehow it, that worked because I was like, wow. I was like, actually, I, 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 yeah, I surf, but I paddleboard. And then we just started talking. And, and then he's like, like I'm here for oh, a Oh, do you want a beer? And then it was like, do you want a tequila shot? <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and then he, he, we were asking each other what we do. And he asked me, I was like, I'm a teacher. And I'm like, what do you do? He's like, Oh, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I, I'm I just, a, I just, I just surf. And I'm she's like, like how yeah, do you do right. that? What do you really, what I didn't do you say I was a professional. I said, I, I just don't, surf. Yeah, you just surf. I'm like, sure. What do you really do? And I said, I just <laughs> somehow I figured out how to get people to pay me to surf. And then the night was <laughs> pretty badass. And he's like, oh, do you want to go to this after party? And by that time, you know, I had a few drinks and uh, <laughs> I went to the bathroom when I came out, he was actually running away. I was scared. He was running. I was away. running, literally <laughs> trying to get away. He was trying to hop this fence into a cow field to run back to his hotel. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need a little more context. <laughs> running away from her because you were like, this is dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> so the guy surfs a tsunami in Alaska, but he's running away from her. Yeah. 
just to, yeah. to clarify. Nicole, I feel like that's the <laughs> ultimate compliment. <laughs> she's got Cuban blood. She's not a frying pan. She's a skillet. <laughs> <laughs> so you get talking in that first meeting and apparently it's electric enough that Garrett feels the need to run away. <laughs> what are your first impressions of each other in that in that first real conversation? Um, he was just the most charming, uh, charismatic, funny, but also just so attentive, like mm. literally. And it lasted for about what? So we had kids. So we had kids. He would, <laughs> he would hang on my every word. Wow. From the moment we met till we had kids. <laughs> Ooh, I love that answer. It's so specific. Yeah. Attentive. It's so important. underrated. So underrated. The new generation is very inattentive. <laughs> right. to well, not, present. Very, um, not present. Not present. Not present. Aren't we lucky, Garrett, to have not had the internet? There was no Instagram or really Facebook yeah. at that I time. I probably would have been on my phone. Yeah, you would have. We never would have met if it was in the age of Instagram. Two ships <laughs> no. passing in the night. Yep. <laughs> it's it's funny what she oh, just said. We, we never would have met of if we were not. the age of Instagram. Think yep. about that for a second. Oh, I've thought about it for many seconds. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're never really in the moment. Never. And, you know, I feel like the phone is kind of a social crutch. Like if you are kind of awkward, you don't know how to make conversation. Right, you can just, just sit like, there on your phone. And- <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm not uncool. Like I have people I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> and wasn't there something endearing about the fact that a, a guy who surfs 100 foot waves has such terrible game? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like his game was terrible. No, maybe it was purposefully terrible. No, his uh, opening line was cheesy given the cut. Co- I mean, what the know. only thing worse would have been do you surf I, often. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't ever think of a that I had a game and I never really think those types of situations through. I just go straight in and make the best of it. And wow, that's the philosophy of yeah. probably everything. And, and when it works, he <laughs> runs away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if so it's, Gary- out, if it's out of control, I'm gone. <laughs> Things working out of control. I was like, oh, oh, this chick, she's too beautiful. I can't, I gotta. Wow. But not a huge wave. Amazing. So, Garrett, what were your first impressions talking to Nicole? Uh, she was just so beautiful and so smart and just, I just thought to myself, if only the world could, more people were like Nicole and the world, everybody would could see through Nicole's eyes, the world would be a much better place. And she just, I mean, just got me from the very start. I have to mm. say, I mean, after watching 100 Foot Wave, I find Nicole, like you're super calming. Mm-hmm. Like there's a real just, it, yeah. f- it feels like you, the anchor is there, you know? Oh yeah. It's, I, I really mean that as a compliment. You know, I had you guys- when, I, when I had, when I had first started talking to her, she said she was a school teacher. So I was like, wow, this is, she's amazing. And then I stand up paddle, whoa, more amazing. And then just seemed so well put together and so articulate and, I was just like, wow, this is exactly who I need as my partner. She, we can, and I was thinking maybe she can start towing with me. And <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Weird. She'll be driving me into waves. I'll be putting her on waves. And it's just like, wow, this is too good to be true. It's a real, like, I feel like a real yin and yang here. Mm-hmm. It's such a good compliment. Yeah. That, that's what came out of the, uh, the documentary is I, I felt like you guys are the perfect complement for each other. Yeah. And, and a lot of relationships aren't. They're like identical. And they, we always ask, we're going to ask yes. you, how do you compliment each yeah. other? That's a future question that's coming soon. But my impression of you guys is you're the perfect compliment. Yeah. Uh, and Thank I rarely you. see that. I mean, we don't have to ask it in the future. I can ask it right now. You can, right now. How would you guys say? Because, I mean, obviously, in the documentary, they, they do touch on that. They talk about how, Nicole, you are sort of the, you know, the, the calm. Mm-hmm. And then Garrett's sort of thrill-seeking all the time. Do you think that's an accurate representation of how you balance each other? Or please elaborate. 100%. Uh, <laughs> Once in a while, it flip-flops. Does it? When does that happen? When you're tuning into the storm. <laughs> does that happen? Once in a while. And you calm the storm? I usually get stormy, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, for me... <laughs> One of the things the gifts Garrett has given me is uh, 
freedom really and I say it in the show like the sense of adventure the sense of anything being possible you know I am super I always tell people the most irresponsible thing I've ever done is run away and marry Garrett like it just <laughs> is I'm a very uh, type a organized detailed on time just like follow the rules pretty much and you know with Garrett there was just this like freedom of we can do whatever we want. We don't have to like pack a beach bag to go to the beach. We can just like get in the car and go. Like it doesn't have to be planned out, you know, like the freedom of just living, exploring and experiencing whatever we want, whenever we want. It's a real gift to be with a person like that. Yeah. And also also be that person. But and I to mean, be I'm- honest, we're like you're you're my Garrett in some ways <laughs> to a far lesser extent but yeah I think yeah. A, I'm definitely a lot the one better that's looking like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was about to make that joke Thank you. <laughs> I'm definitely the one that's like let's go on a trip like let's do this yeah. and for my career I sing opera by day and I'll go and live in another city oh. for like five weeks at a time and I think it's good for him because I think he could be a little you know he's a born and raised Manhattan or I think it's easy for people from Manhattan to be like, yeah, kind of insular. Opera, let's hear a little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before, Garrett. Never, yeah, ever. Yeah. Come on. That's like, what's it like to ride a big wave? <laughs> Is it scary? <laughs> so uh, how would you say Garrett and Nicole compliments you? Or, or do you do you agree with what she says on that one? A hundred percent agree. And she's just my rock. If, as long as I'm with her, I have no worries about anything, and I feel so secure and stable, and and I'm just so happy and in love, and everything's oh. just perfect. Your brother at one point in the documentary said that since she came around, you've changed, and it's like you're more connected. I thought that was really lovely. More focused, maybe, more patient, more present, but still all things that I'm working on every day. I'm not the best at any of them, but I definitely... Uh, the best Garrett, my best self is being present, being patient, being loving, kind and helpful. But it's challenging. This world gets a hold of us and makes us who we are. And we got to work, focus and figure out how to better ourselves. And we got to work on it every day if we want anything to change. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was an early hurdle in your relationship? <laughs> <laughs> it could be multiple if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I didn't tell her I didn't have a driver's license for a long time. <laughs> I had a bunch of Yeah, things. he decides to drop all the bombs after I've already fallen in love and like ran away from my life. That's what all guys do, Nicole. Come on. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? You didn't have a driver's license? Not at that I time. Mean, the irony of that is just, <laughs> just <laughs> like story, chef, yeah. chef's kiss. Yes, that is incredibly <laughs> ironic. Yeah. So, so was there anything early on where you were, where you just, you're together now and there's just something that you, it's your first challenge and how do you overcome it? You know, it was the craziest thing. We were like twins. Um, all over our bodies, we would find these little. That's really. Well, I'm ironic. serious, like a birthmark <laughs> or a mole, and, but in the exact same spot, yeah. exact everything and and we thought exactly the same um i think i always had you used to call me his book match like you know, yeah like yeah book. oh yeah oh, nice. i've had that in a long time <laughs> oh <laughs> it was we were like book matches it was it, we still are still are, are. <laughs> still are but it's uh um, i mean we had lots of hurdles i mean we both literally to be together i mean at the time you know you're in love so it, there were never any hurdles with each other, but like life was the hurdle for us at the moment. We literally just both left our lives. Like I left everything at my house. I only had what was in my backpack mm-hmm. when I went to go. See we lived her. out of a suitcase for three years. Yeah. Just wow. traveling. Whoa. And he, he had ever. some debt. <laughs> and you had some debt. Yeah. Too. Mine was a. <laughs> It's a, a, a good hurdle. It's a good comeback. We had the same amount of debt. Mine was in responsible debt, and hers was responsible debt. <laughs> it was a killer comeback. You had some debt. You had some yeah. debt. 
One had responsible, one had irresponsible death. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what would you say is different about the current partnership that makes it successful versus past relationship? I think what the previous question was the compliment to each other and how Andy was saying, you know, sometimes you have these couples like they're just so alike and there are other times they're like way too polar opposites. Like there's no common ground. Um, I think we're like the perfect balance of having like the same vision, but at the same time, complimenting each other. And that's something I don't think I've ever had in another relationship. Most of my other relationships well, the Pat, the previous one, you know, we were so similar, like there, so there was no, like none of that freedom and like excitement and fun type of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, you know, Garrett's super funny. He makes me laugh. Mm. <laughs> it's very powerful. Yeah, yes. Look, I'm really young. And she starts to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally married Andy because of his humor. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. I mean, look at it. <laughs> No, but it's true. It's fun. It's amazing how powerful that is. It's like it turns someone from like a creepy old guy to like, like it completely <laughs> a funny not, creepy old. Yeah, well, guy. Casanova, yeah. like you're just totally yeah. swept off your feet by the George laughter. Clooney. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's so true. He turned me into George Clooney somehow. I'm like, I'm not George <laughs> Clooney. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you a very, very important message. I've lost count of how many times we've brought this important message to all of you, but we're going to do it again because it's that important. I feel like it's getting to the point where I think my picture should be on Hello Tushy ads. I agree. The Hello Tushy bidet should have your face involved in it somehow. I want to be the spokesperson (laughs) and I'm offended that I'm not the spokesperson. Yeah. Hello Tushy. What's going on with that? Come on. (laughs) Am I not done enough? (laughs) We really are the Pied Piper of the bidet movement. (laughs) No pun intended. What? Movement. Uh, it's loose. <laughs> I mean. Well, we really love our Hello Tushy bidet yeah. because it actually cleans you with water. I know. You're it's not novel. Rel- I know. You're not relying on dry toilet paper to clean a disgusting part of your body. And you are saving 40%. Wait, is it's more It's than- actually 80. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be the spokesperson. <laughs> You're saving 80%. 80% less toilet paper will be used in your household, if you switch to a bidet- 80% yeah. less toilet paper. And the Hello Tushy bidet, if you're new around here, is affixed to your existing toilet with no special plumbing. And then you turn your toilet, the one that you already have, you don't need to buy a new one, into a fancy toilet that sprays your rear end. Yeah, and then when your friends come over, instead of being like, oh God, they're going to the bathroom, you do number two, you can actually, it could be a conversation starter. Be like, oh, wow, that Hello Tushy, that's great. You're like, yeah, isn't it great? Everything's happy. <laughs> Start washing with a Hello Tushy bidet for a better clean. Go to hellotushy.com slash shandy to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners. So go to hellotushy.com slash shandy for 10% off. After you buy and install your Tushy bidet, show it off. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on Instagram. So, Garrett, what about you? What's different about this versus past relationships? Uh, definitely was ready. And she compliments me 100%. And she's, we work together and we focus, manifest. Uh, everything that we, in the beginning, we would write, we'd read and write every morning and we write about what, how we won't want to improve ourselves and what we want to work on for our careers or for business, for lack of a better word. Wait, you do this every and morning? Every morning. Wow. And, we used to. Yeah. We're, we're about to start. I just wrote one this morning. So we're about to start. Remember we had kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that thing. <laughs> Which we will touch on. Yes. We will. But it's so crazy. Uh, all of us as humans, our minds are so powerful. And Nicole and I just aligned and focused, put paper to pen to paper, manifested everything and anything we wanted whenever we wanted it, like clockwork. It was just surreal. And even today that we don't read and write every day and we're not on the exact same page on paper, we're still pretty much on the same page on what we're focusing on. And even if we're not, whatever we're thinking about ends up happening somehow. Sometimes there'll be more challenges, more road bumps, 
more speed bumps. But just together, when as since we've aligned everything, it just lined up from when we were doing everything on paper till now. And and we still put put these plans together. And I always forget. I'm like, so what are we focusing on? And she's like, yeah. And I, I try to bring new ideas and new projects and new things. She's like, no, remember we talked about this. You agreed. I was like, <laughs> for complimenting you there. <laughs> The, the difference between relationships, I think, for you is probably the support, like just having yeah, a partner. Yeah, a partner, support. somebody. I like did everything myself back in the day from 17 to 40, 43. Uh, if anything was going to happen, I had to make it happen on my own. And uh, yeah, real partnership. And, yeah. The, and one of the testaments, I think, to being in a great relationship, not, not to toot our own horn, but is to be able to do business together and not kill each other. <laughs> and I mean, you guys are essentially business partners, correct? 100%. She manages 100%. everything. That's so, so hard to do just with friends, let alone your your significant other. And it's a, it's a real testament, I think, to a strong relationship. I mean, we have this podcast. We've had our, we've butted our heads over this. Yeah. I mean, but we're still fine. And it's, I think it's even made us stronger. Yeah, but it's it does open a can of worms. Like I I do think working together becomes a whole other aspect of your relationship that you mm -hmm. have to navigate. Has that been a challenge for you guys or has it come pretty naturally? Well, we don't really know any difference. Because okay. <laughs> She, she said, answer. I'm going to get you organized from day from, one. From day one like, I'm going to get you oh, organized. Like, and, so um, you're on payroll, <laughs> payroll day one. That's it. <laughs> but I have like all these uh, huge plans and amazing projects, but everything was on paper, but mm -hmm. it was there ready. And she saw, took that. And then she went through all the emails and then she's like, okay, what's this? What are we doing here? How do we do this? And I'm just like, oh, I mean, the, one of the most fascinating things to me in the documentary was the fact that the person who got you to Nazare was actually Nicole, strangely. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. I mean, well, at least that's the way they portrayed it. I don't know about strangely. She is her. She is the manager. But I was thinking this This is a guy who's obsessed, obsessed with big waves and finding the that's biggest true. wave. She deserves the credit. And the one who got you over the hump was Nicole. hundred percent. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. There would still be nobody surfing Nazare. Not, there would not, would not be one person surfing it because incredible. all the teams that went in the past, came in the past, looked at it, thought deemed it impossible. Everybody mm -hmm. says it was mm -hmm. impossible to surf because you wouldn't be able to go back out with the jet ski because it's a closeout. Yep. And we were in love with nothing better to do but hang out for a month <laughs> and figure out if it was possible. And it was Amazing. possible. Okay. So I have a question based on that. Cause so half of our podcast is us giving relationship advice from the perspective of a happily married couple. And we've actually gotten several questions with of course, with degrees that aren't quite to this extent. But for example, there was one question where this girl's boyfriend was obsessed with his one wheel. Yeah, he was <laughs> with like the one electric wheel. scooter and he and he would go out at night without protective gear and not tell her where he was going. And like he had a bad fall and that kind of thing. And she was like, I, it really makes me nervous. Like, where's when am I allowed to be like, I don't want you to do that because I it makes me worry. So my question, Nicole, is for you. And I feel like you had to know this was coming. How do you juggle being his manager, being his cheerleader, being his support in all this with the anxiety you must feel with him doing something so dangerous on a daily basis? The answer is <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guy. for the snort, Garrett. Appreciated well, that. He knows exactly what I'm going to say. Uh, the answer is going to be a huge letdown. <laughs> um. I have zero anxiety of him surfing those waves. Um, I do have anxiety if he says, oh, I'm going to take the kids and we're going to go to the store. We'll be back in an hour. That's an anxiety. Because, because he's driving? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, because so of the driving. I, I, I'm just kidding. Well, you know, he has his driver's Come license on. You don't now. need a driver's <laughs> license to be a good driver. Well, he'll, he'll, it's just he'll a technicality. lose a credit card on the way. He'll lose a kid. He'll come <laughs> back with one less kid. <laughs> but at least I'll bring a dog home. Right. Or um, <laughs> two ducks and ten ducklings. And, and kids. <laughs> Oh, so oh, my anxiety is, is on land. Um, his passion is where he belongs. And wow. That's, wow. Where, that's so, where I actually feel he 
<laughs> is present and aware of his surroundings and what he's doing. So I know that he's fine out there. Wow, that's <laughs> that is fascinating. So is that is that lack of anxiety when he's out on those big waves a function of how much you love him and how much you you are happy for the happiness for him is is transcends any anxiety you could have or is that actually that you think that that's the safest place for him but you know they always say like oh the safest place is to be in an airplane well tell that to someone who has like you know flying anxiety right, but right. you actually believe that that's the safest place for Garrett or is that oh, just well, you since, feeling so happy I do believe him? that is the safest place for him Amazing. since we since we met I had literally no fear since the day we met her. And it was before that for a few years, since like 2007, we met in, yeah, 10, 9, 10, 10. So since the day we met, I had been so comfortable never telling her I'm afraid or this or that, because I'm always super comfortable in the ocean. I well, think, I've witnessed it. I've yeah, witnessed yeah. all these, like I've been on a boat She's, 100 miles out to sea at Cortez Banks. And like, mm -hmm. I can see like the trepidation on every other big wave surfer's face. Like they're really like concerned about actually going out there to surf. And Garrett's just like, oh, no, 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 let's go. <laughs> He's out there all day longer than all the younger ones. And it's just like a kid in a candy store. So yeah, he's projected like this confidence on me that I just, Think can't shake. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. That's exactly yeah. it. I think yeah, yeah. we never talked. Yeah, because you through. never really have ever. Sh yeah. yeah, I mean, he's still never. here. So, well, the last <laughs> five years, I've been a little concerned about my. And I'm just like, stop being dramatic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. Get out there! I'm like, oh, there's a giant swell. You pussy. <laughs> I mean, there's a giant swell just hit Tahiti, and I and I she saw it like she like, Gary, did you see this? I'm like, yeah, I saw, I saw it. Like a, a, I saw yeah. I saw the swell going there, and she's like. Oh, don't you want to go? I'm like, no. And she's like, uh, let's, we can get you on a plane. You can go. And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> you maniac. And normally, and normally I'd be on suicide watch right, if I so missed I'm just that like, as well. What's going on? Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's role reversal. I Amazing. am shocked by this answer. This is incredible. <laughs> I, I guess I just, you know, I thought that the documentary just didn't touch on it enough. I think it was edited to make it seem like you, Nicole, were more anxious than you actually are. Oh, because really? they because they I, probably thought that the the audience could not appreciate or even <laughs> conceive of you being not anxious. For me, right. I felt like and, they did. And I do on. think there's the dramatic element because most of the big wave surfer wives they cry and they're mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I don't know if you're gonna come home," oh. mm -hmm. and it's so dramatic. <laughs> I'm just like, I, get out there, and you better get the biggest <laughs> one, or don't she's come like, home. <laughs> get, she's like, get me that insurance money. <laughs> no blow wow. job if you don't get the biggest one. <laughs> 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 wow, I'm actually floored by that answer. But a very that you know, in its own and way, I that was have not life insurance because I know you said the insurance. It's bad. I think it's bad luck. So. Wow, and you don't have life insurance. This is pure we, love. We, we have life insurance. Oh, health insurance. Health insurance. We don't have health. Yeah, insurance. we do. We eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speechless now. The, I mean, life insurance, the life insurance was, yeah. We, well, people we, have really gotten on us. Yeah, and like, we all almost did. Of big waves, like, what are you wait, wait, wait. But, but can I ask a question? What life insurance company would, would give you insurance? No, that's out there. You can yeah. It. It's and like a million dollars here. a year. <laughs> we have companies here in Portugal that we could probably get sponsored, get it well, for they free. Have offered. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Got it. And you but, still haven't done it? We just think bad it's bad, 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 bad. It's bad oh, luck. Wow. I agree. Okay. Are you guys suspicious, either of you? You're betting on yourself to die. You're right. <laughs> I totally feel this guy. Yeah, you guys are in yeah, yeah. company. I totally, totally believe that the day I get life insurance, I'm going to die. <laughs> but it's okay Andy. if your significant other gets the life insurance on you and doesn't tell you. Oh, 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 I like this. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you were fully... I was I was with that. I, I like that. Andy theory. was along Good for the ride. ride. Yeah. I mean, there oh, may be no bad all there. <laughs> so next question. This is Andy's favorite question in every love fest. Yes. Go for it. How do you guys fight and resolve conflict? Luckily, I have a, my memory is I have probably the most amazing memory in the world. <laughs> And it's very, very selective. And short. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of stuff gets 
deleted quick. Like I can be mad and then one minute later I'm fine. So, but, and Nicole too, luckily we both have uh, very short fuses and, and uh, we, we get, yeah, whenever we get in an argument, if, as long as we well, I'm usually talk the mature about one and as, just ignore him. And then once he's calmed down, I'm like, you know, you were a real dick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you confess to being a dick when she? Oh no. yeah. He's, re- he's actually that, really, he, he's like terrible in the moment, but he always, he always comes back and apologizes. Hard. Yeah. It's like one, a 10 to one. Yeah. <laughs> 10 to one apologies. Yeah. yeah, I got to do 10. She gets to do one. That's, a, that's about yeah. right. I think that's how it should be. <laughs> um, have you guys ever heard of human design? No. Just look it up after, but um, it gives you like your soul's genetic blueprints, but it's all about energy types. But it, it talks about how you deal with like conflict and emotions. And it's really great for couples to understand each other's like energetic fields. Mm-hmm. And it gives you like specific tools on how to communicate, how to avoid arguments like some people aren't meant to like engage in the art of argument until like 24 hours later. So it's Very really interesting. interesting to learn each other's energy types and how to communicate with each other. So I would definitely human look design. Each other's... It's how does spot, that... It is spot on. Yeah. It's, it's really, yeah. yeah how it, does it translate for you guys? Well, just how he was saying, like he can be super mad and then two hours later he's like oh what what are you talking about nothing was wrong i wasn't upset and then she's like, still, boi- moody, she's still like boiling until i emotional wave some people are governed by their uh solar plexus which is their emotional center mm-hmm. so their mantra is there's no truth in the now so for people who are aware of this they can know like however they're feeling in this moment it's actually going to shift so to don't react to those emotions unless they're there like a day later Okay. So you, you would say it tracks in your relationship. That's oh, hundred percent. And then yeah. mine is, I'm like this completely open. I don't have anything, any of my centers. So I just absorb everything from any, everybody. So when I'm feeling whatever emotion it is, I can pretty much guarantee that I'm actually absorbing it from Garrett or from the kids. And it's not really even mine. I, so I can know wow. how they're feeling. Just yeah. um, recently. I figured out that if you're ever in an argument, instead of having your ego and hold on to that thing for an hour, two hours a day, you got to go straight to your heart and think about how you're feeling and what did you do wrong and, and then come back to the person right away with an apology and why, or talk it through. And then things just are boom, done. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it could take a few hours. I think he just figured this out I this did. week. Just today. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, you fought right before the podcast. Well, when they were writing. It happened, I think it happened <laughs> two yesterday. Two days ago. Yeah, and two it was like, ago. usually I have to come to him like, hey, you know, you really hurt my feelings. Da, 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 da. Like, I have to explain to him. But it was like the first time he got to me before I had the chance to come to him. Ooh. And he's like, I'm feeling really bad. I shouldn't have done that. I know that I was wrong. Wow. Really sorry. I'm like, and wow. Felt, and I felt said, really good. And I was just like, about much better you. that way. Like, that right. Was amazing. You acknowledging it before I even had to bring it to your attention. It was incredible. And, <laughs> and to be clear, this was 11 years since you first met, right? So you've been together 11 years. Okay. I just want to make. It's never too late. No. Yeah. But also I think it's interesting how fighting style really Mm -hmm. is something that evolves. And I do believe you can get better at. Yeah. You do learn. I I always feel that. And we've talked about this before. It's the queen bee mentality. It's like all the workers, like no matter what's going on, no matter what the threat, you're always protecting the queen bee and the queen bee is your relationship. And when you find the right person, that's your person, which clearly you guys have found. There's nothing worth endangering the relationship. There's yeah. nothing worth endangering the queen bee. Even if you don't necessarily agree, you must protect the relationship. And I think part of that is appreciating that if I have picked this person as my person, like this is part of me, then I should respect the fact that if I think I'm right about something, there's probably a middle ground where I'm wrong. Mm. Never go to sleep angry. You gotta never be go to sleep angry. Yeah. Wait, you guys never go to sleep angry? 
I'm no, I'm not the best at it. I'm just saying don't do it because it'll. <laughs> I was so about to say we go to sleep and at- mad, and they're like, "What's going on?" She's like, yeah, he's like, like "Are you still mad at me? Are you mad at me?" <laughs> she holds on to it all night in her sleep. I'm like, "What are you doing?" I really don't. I just decide in the morning he hasn't apologized, so I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> that's that's good. Well, that's good. yeah, it's it's um it's okay to go to sleep passive aggressive though in my book. <laughs> that's my biggest pet peeve. I'm passive. <laughs> When we fight, I feel like half the time we go to sleep angry because <laughs> the time apart and just to unwind oftentimes solves the problem. Yeah. Unless, you know, someone what really was to blame, in which case I agree, Nicole, until you get the apology, you're not pretending it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. OK, so you have two beautiful children. With great wow. names. <laughs> One named Barrel, which I will explain to our non-surfing viewers, is the term used for when you are surfing in a wave and it curls over you and you're inside the curl of the wave. I know no one will understand. Why are you defining it when we have I'm, Garrett McNamara on? Well, we're, I mean, we're he, actually, it's not for that. We were hoping that he be, gets a vineyard, you know, has a nice vineyard in Italy someday. Oh. Barrels of wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be here all week, right? So how has parenthood changed your relationship, yeah. if at all? Well, when I met Nicole, she was the girl that I've dreamed of my whole life. And I was just head over heels and didn't want anything to take any time away from being with her. And I did. She did express to me very on that she wanted to have children. And the last thing I wanted to do was deprive her of that because she's just an amazing woman. She'd be the most amazing mother. Uh, the kids would be so lucky to have her as a mother and those would be my children. But still I was, uh, didn't think it through too much. I should have thought it through more and said, no, no kids. Cause then I <laughs> all to myself, but our children are so beautiful. So amazing. So such a joy to watch them grow. I'm in a much better place. I'm more ready to be a father. And yeah, it's, oof. Well, what, what, I forgot the question. Uh, how has it changed our relationship? How has yeah. it changed? Um, yeah, and then the kids came and I was chopped liver. Well, let me break it down. <laughs> I, had, I had a home birth with our first, with Oh, Barry. wow. And he was 10 pounds. What? Ooh. Yes. And it was a very, hor- we'll just go with her. Wow. I held her up for 20 <laughs> hours. Well, we were supposed to, we were watching these great videos. She had this plan of having this amazing orgasmic birth. And I was like, all right, let's do this. And uh, turned into gorillas in the mist gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> he was 10 pounds. He was stuck. We were at home and it was just, it was, uh, it was intense. I would say hmm, the midwives left, you know, a couple hours after he was born, we're laying in the bed. I just have gone through like the last 24 hours of, I can't even like comprehend it. And my husband starts crying. Oh, wow. because he's lost his wife and there's nobody to scratch his head and give him. The <laughs> Wait, you're kidding. Did this really, well, this really, not, I mean, he, he is the true happen? victim in this. He is the true. Maybe, victim. you know, he was releasing hormones from this traumatic birth as well, but no, <laughs> he, was, he was emotionally upset because he had felt a loss of me. Wow. <laughs> That's true love. He true actually love. loves you more than the guy who would have just been there consoling you. Yeah, I find yeah. this fascinating because I confess it's like it's something that has crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. We, we don't have children, but I have to admit that there's like a, a childish part in me that doesn't like the idea of, of, the sh- of sharing. Oh, sharing. No. Yeah. And, and he, oh, no, she didn't want to share me at all, but she I mean, wanted with the kids, yeah. you know, I'll share. But he does not want to share. Yeah. It's interesting. So how, sorry. Was it an immediate? Yeah, I mean, you've accepted it. Yeah. I don't think. Well, I'm really excited about this next one. Yes. (laughs) We heard. Congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) Three times a charm, right? Yeah, you've come around. (laughs) What were you going to say? I need one more person to take time away from (laughs) me. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering for you, Garrett, if it was like an immediate, but everyone says like the kid's born and it's like an immediate, just your whole computer program has changed. Like, did you feel that or were you still just like- I, I started this, crying. It was amazing. He okay. was perfect. But I have to cool. say, you know, they say that and especially the moms, you see these moms who like post like, Oh, the second you were born, my heart expanded and I never mm-hmm. thought it could have that much yeah. love in it. Yeah, yeah. After I had him, I'm like, that's bullshit. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to hear this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Please, please I elaborate. Mean, he was really, he was extremely cute. I mean, I definitely like had love for him, but like I was destroyed as like a human being. And like here you are supposed to like confess that this was like the greatest moment of your life and i mean it it took a a little while like it took me a little while well you still haven't really recovered well physically that but um you know barrel sitting barrel sitting there in the background like say what (laughs) (laughs) no he's my favorite i love him to death like child but we but, just went on the road the day after we I mean, did. We, yeah, she came was, to my birthday party that the next day okay. i'm like you stay <laughs> home a party. not a party we just went to dinner and i was like i'm just gonna go have a less dinner. than 24 hours yeah. later I like, went, I'm wow. Like, okay. wow that was wow. but it wasn't like this instantaneous like connection click right. and that was for me who was carrying him so Thank you for that honest answer. Yeah. Everyone feels obliged to just say, right. I feel like, feel I mean, like I'm sure almost, some people have that. Yeah. You almost feel guilty because it yeah. isn't that for you. Exactly. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. No, I think it's I, important. A lot of people are going to like this answer. Yeah. Well, I just think it's important. Had to. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I that, am well, that's the, the beyond thing. happy that we had them. And Barrow is just no, he's amazing. amazing. And no. they are the own just like me so yeah they're fine and i mean and some, I, something's got to keep me young just to make me not seem like a monster i did breastfeed the child till he was almost three so he's not lacking uh motherly love and attention. <laughs> no i i do think that the two can coexist mm-hmm. like you can there, have we found uh, yeah that's the thing you don't have to say it was magic from the beginning yeah. to have a wonderful beautiful relationship and with to your be child. a wonderful i mother. think everyone thinks that yeah it's a if anybody has kids or is thinking of having kids the, and you're gonna nurse we found out how to get them off the boob <laughs> Oh, no, he's giving breastfeeding advice. Essential. Oh, this is <laughs> not what I expected from this interview. Essential oils. You put a little ginger on there and you go. At first, you, you don't let, let them nurse for a night. And then you look, let them see the boob not looking. It's, it's pretty like engorged and there's veins. And they're like, <laughs> and then you, it's, it's, it's sick. And you put some essential oil in there and they eat it. And I, oh, they say don't want any more. Next day, same thing. And then Barrel's like, is it still what spicy? Is it? Spicy, <laughs> spicy, it's still spicy. And uh, after like three days, he didn't really ask for it anymore. He never. He, it did really work. I mean, he was on the older side. I don't think it would work for a six-month-old baby, or maybe even a year. But uh, no, he would went till ten. No, I know, but I'm saying he would have kept if going. you're trying to. I mean, it worked really well. It worked with that too. I, uh, I, if, yeah, if, if, essential oils. if this clip of Garrett giving an explanation of how to wean a child off breastfeeding doesn't go viral, then I hate this world. I hate everything about it. I just thought it's a nice, helpful tip. It's really hard. It's, it's the hardest thing yeah. ever. And you can't go out on a date without. Yeah, no, it's, it sounds no, like it's practical, practical advice. Yeah. I feel like it's a little bit lost on us, but I, I still objectively uh-huh. understand I'm gonna remember this. how good this I'm going to remember this. Yeah. I'm gonna, but when she's like in like, like the child's like eight years old, still breastfeeding, I'm like, what did Garrett say? What did Garrett say? What did he say? <laughs> Ginger oil. All right. I have two more questions and then we're going to get into the game. So the first is any beliefs about relationships that have changed now that you have found each other? Yes. Twin flame does exist. Ooh. I don't know if it's like what I believe about relationships, but I just, um, <laughs> so I, you know, I have step children, but um, Tiari, she's 12, going on like 20. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and, and she loves pasta. So I always tell her, why have California pizza kitchen pasta when you can have like pasta from a Michelin star restaurant? You know, like, don't settle with your pasta. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like, 
Yeah. And I think in today's age, like people just are really settling or, you know, fear, they're afraid there isn't anybody else out there. Mm -hmm. And there is like truly your other half is out there. So, and I tell it to my brother, he's still single and he's like, oh yeah, she's nice. And I'm just like, if you don't feel that, like, oh my God, this is my person. Like why even waste time? Why even waste your time? Right. Oh, and and you this. probably like you weren't like, I want to meet a 45 year old big wave surfer. <laughs> like you have to like a lot of these women we talked to, it's like you have to be open minded. They have a vision. They're like, I'm meeting this guy. He's 27. He has this job. He yeah. has this thing. He's, He's this, this tall. family. Like he looks like this brown hair, six feet tall. And like they have to get over that. It's like what you don't don't. I was only 43, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I love those answers. Yeah, they're great. Twinkly. You guys give good answers. You do. You give Thanks. good answers. Very good. All right. Final question. So as we alluded to at the beginning of this, you met in sort of, here, I'll put it this way. Nicole, you said that the most irresponsible thing you'd ever done was be with Garrett. You said that on the show. You said it here. And it's because, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were both married when you met, correct? Correct. I think that's why he was running away. Yeah. <laughs> so we could go back to that story. So he ran away, then we ended up at the party, and then he was like kind of ignoring me. And I uh I was leaving. So I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna let him know I'm leaving. So I said, Oh, I'm gonna leave. He's like, I'll walk you to but the you car. But you actually left out one part. We had a teeny little kiss in the back of a van. But it was just like, like a like pack, a like <laughs> But it was, I could, I already had all these feelings and I felt like she was having all these feelings. I'm like, holy shit, what are we doing? And um, so that's why I ran. So I was like, I don't need you to walk me to the car. Like, I'm a big, big girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I have okay. to tell you something. And then that's when he said, I'm married. I'm like, well, so am I. And I'm like, mm, yeah, sure. And she's like, I am. And I'm not getting into it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is, did this, this actually... Is Play out yeah, this no, way. that's the, the the actual script of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Did she say it all curmudgeonly like that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, you know, I had been drinking. So. <laughs> <laughs> so my question related to that is the aha moment, because we often do get a question around the one, whether or not you believe the one exists, and how you're able to identify uh, the one feeling versus a non one feeling. And the fact that you were both married meant that you felt you had felt that before. Can you in any way, I know this is like, I'm asking the impossible, but is there a way to verbalize the feeling you felt that could justify Nicole, what you said to like completely leave your life, like make such a big sacrifice. Garrett, you had three kids with your pre in your previous marriage. Mm -hmm. Like it's a big, like to have that Thank kind you. of certainty, I'm yeah. in awe of that kind of certainty. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm hoping you can attempt to. And, and they were it. right. Let's be clear. There are many cases like Larry King was married like eight times. I'm oh, sure yeah. he thought it was the one every single time. Yeah, but yeah. This, in this case, they were no, right. No, yeah. You've been together for over a decade now. Obviously, you were right. So my question is like, how? Yeah. How did you know? How did you have that certainty? Mm -hmm. But it's a good question because I think about it sometimes because at the time, like, you know, obviously, I had just had this wedding and all my friends are like, what are you doing? He's just gonna like use you and throw you to the side. And I like, it didn't. Friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, the feeling was just that, I'm just like, what are you crazy? That wasn't even a possibility that he wasn't like genuine. Like, I don't know, it was just the passion. I had never experienced passion like that and that's why like I tell my brother unless it's like oh my god I can't live without this person then it's probably not the one because yes. there's plenty of times where you like meet somebody and you're like oh yeah they're really cute oh they're really nice but yep. wasn't that like oh my god like he's old <laughs> 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 it's not I, old I, it's I, sexy i can't Garrett. live sexy. without this person like yeah my life I, I i guess it was like a feeling of like my life that i meant to live is with garrett kind of right I don't know you had this moment sense. like wow. human design human design <laughs> no <laughs> well, nicole you yeah, said just, like this blindness of like this is <laughs> this is who I'm supposed to like be with. Mm -hmm. 
And you felt the same way, Garrett. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Nicole, you said on the show there was nothing we could do about it. That's true. <laughs> That's powerful. You can't live without the person. It's one thing to like someone and be like they they check off all my boxes. Right. You know, this is they have all the things I want, but mm-hmm. I I might be able to live without them. There's times when you literally would rather die than leave lose the person you're with, and this is you can't do anything about it. So I'm a chronic overthinker and I have a hard time making decisions. And so I'm just in <laughs> awe of that mm-hmm. kind of certainty. I yeah, think. it happens. Yeah. yeah. You're lucky. And I'm glad we weren't wrong. That would have really yeah. sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have well, sucked. I, <laughs> yeah. I used to travel the world alone pretty much and with my friends, with my my tow partners and and friends and they all thought I was kind of weird because I mean they never really said it, but I could tell because we would the girls would throw themselves at you wherever you went, and I never fooled around. I always didn't do that, and they thought I was kind of a weirdo for it. And when Nicole, it was just I was unstoppable when I met her, and it was and I didn't have the support at home that I had previously, and there was and I wasn't in the best spot personally in my other relationship. And when she came along, it was just, there was nothing that could stop it. And you know, what's so beautiful about this is that in a lot of relationships, like your friends will be like, Oh, you've changed, man. You're not the, what you used to be, you know, because it's some girl that came into their life. You have, if, if anything advanced and become more aggressive with your big wave surfing career since you met Nicole, which I think is a testament to how healthy this relationship well, and is. And how supportive she is. How supportive. She's fostering the thing that you do, which a lot of women would be like, okay, we're married yeah. now. You're not surfing big waves anymore. You're becoming an accountant. That's I have a feeling I would fall into that category. <laughs> right. I'm too pragmatic. I'd be like, oh. Yeah. Oh, no, you wouldn't let me yeah. do that. Yeah, my, I, I fret a lot more. She doesn't than you, love Nicole. me that much. <laughs> my friends that I traveled with were very concerned and mm-hmm. not very happy that. Yeah, and I'd never seen Garrett do this before, so they're tripping. My one friend, Kaylee, my main guy, was working with. He uh, that first night. What? <laughs> tell him the story. It was so funny. No, I mean, I didn't know him. It was the first time I was meeting him. But- and I'm introducing him to my buddy, my right hand man, and he's just like. So he pays, this, <laughs> he pays this other guy to like try to steal me away from Garrett. Ooh, yeah, he's what? like, I'll Wait give you this much money I... if, you can, if you can get her away from Garrett because like it was going to ruin his life. If, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, and the, I guess on the, the outside you can see how people. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nicole, you sound insulted by who he chose. <laughs> I am super insulted by who he chose. <laughs> yeah, I guess our friends mean well. Yeah. And I, in, I understand the optics of it are not ideal. Well, it's hard but. to be like if you're on the outside, you just see it as like a, a thing. It's mm-hmm. like a binary thing. When you're on the inside, you you know that it's so real and so inescapable, but your friends can fully feel what you're feeling. So they, they have a more rudimentary takeaway. Yeah. We actually said this on a recent Q&A that, the, you know, I think some people sort of romanticize the coming together. Like mm-hmm. maybe they, they fret that the person they're dating hasn't been single long enough, that you're just out of a relationship for one month or like they want it to be like, oh, we were both single. We both did our work. We both worked on ourselves. We both found ourselves. We loved ourselves and we were ready to embark on right. this perfect <laughs> partnership together that would last a lifetime. Go through all the stages. Yeah. But it's often... Exactly the opposite. I mean, how often does... Does Sometimes meeting someone involve yeah. giving you the strength to leave the relationship you were just in? Yeah. yeah. More often than people admit. Yes. Is all I'm going to say on that. Mm-hmm. Don't settle. <laughs> Ever. Don't settle. Thank you. Ever. For anything. Even if it means facing dying alone. <laughs> we, all, we all die alone. It, even if it's within a second. <laughs> face, face it. Don't settle. Agreed. And final question, Andy, this this is for Andy, this question. I narrowed all my wave questions down to some very specific things okay, that have sorry, almost nothing to do with wave. You have to humor him, and then we're going to get to the game. The, inside the, the barrel at Jaws, the one that kind of launched you, how loud was it inside there? Uh, you, the wind is so strong. 
and going by your ears so fast that mm -hmm. it kind of muffles everything. When you're sitting in the channel, you can hear it exploding, but when you're riding them, I usually don't, they're usually not very noisy. And that wave actually went silent for a second as it backdrafted and sucked back. Oh, wow. It, it hit my head right as it went in, which was like, and I heard that, but rest was just kind of wind. And then it sucked back a backdraft. So as it was backdrafting, it was, it was noisy, but it was more of a, like a, a fire hose or I don't know how to explain it, but, or like an airplane engine sucking backwards. And then it went silent for a second before the compression chamber forms and then it spits out right between the backdraft and the spit. It was like silent. Wow. And, and, and in your mind, when you got spit out of it successfully, which 99% of the time would not have happened, what was your, in your mind, what was your thought of the probability that you were actually going to make it out of that without wiping out? The amazing thing about that ride that I, I was focusing on, on manifesting and seeing and knowing. And as I entered that wave, I thought to myself, this is the moment. It all came together, all that training, all that focusing, all that manifesting. Here it is. And as I went in and it clipped me, it blinded me. So now I'm in this thing blind. Oh, my God. But in my mind, all I kept saying is I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. That's all I kept saying in my mind. Wow. And, this is, and just so just so everyone understands, this is not the three and a half foot wave that wiped <laughs> me out at the age of four. This is a 60 ish foot wave, about 50, 60 feet, something like that. That's a very good call. OK. And last question. I only have two. It's <laughs> okay. very quick. Do you have nightmares about waves and what do they look like? <laughs> Never have nightmares about waves. Amazing. OK. What? Amazing. Just amazing. I have nightmares about waves. Why don't you have nightmares about waves? I don't ever very rarely get nightmares. Very, very rare. You ever remember getting a nightmare? Amazing. I love that I have you dreams about flying. So flying dreams. I, I have reoccurring flying dreams. And oh, I'm, but good. And I'm good the connection. only one in the world that can fly in my dreams. And nobody else can same. do it. Same. Oh my God. Same. It's the best. Yeah. It's like you're a little like, I got this on you. <laughs> when I whenever I have flying dreams, I I I wish I could go in and be like, okay, like have that waking dream where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fly the like the way I want to fly. But it, the dream always takes over for me. And now how like, how are you flying? What 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 enables you to <laughs> I I well Charlene and I both have the same kind of flying things. It's like this thing where you start you have really to flapping flap. hard. That's what and, I do, super fast. Really? And, and you, you just go start fast. really and yeah, you just start really you strong. Down, and then you gotta go get and the people yeah. are yeah, looking, yeah. the people are all looking at you and you're like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. Everyone else is like, holy shit. Yes. And you're like, yeah. and you have to go. Like, this is hard work, guys. This is hard work, but yeah. I can do it. Yeah. And, yeah it's flapping. That's exactly <laughs> and we're like special and and cops can chase you or bad guys can chase you oh, or yeah. oh. anything can be yeah. going on and you just you just fly away. Yep. Yeah. You've had the identical dream. This is apparently a thing. All right, Andy, I think it's now time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yes. We did that. <laughs> it's there. It's funny. You, I didn't get this from Nicole from the beginning of this conversation, but she's super competitive. Mm -hmm. you were, she really wants to win. This is going to get is, interesting. That's it, more fun. I really don't like losing. <laughs> 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 oh, we found the one chink in your Yeah, right okay, here. finally, because like you were too chill, Nicole. I'm glad we found something. Well, so, we, we decided to never compete against each other like after in the our first, first week, week. We played, I think it was Scrabble, and from that moment on, we said we will never, ever compete against each other. Okay, we're going to be very 2021 about this and <laughs> say that there are no winners. <laughs> Everyone tried really oh, hard. But we know that's not true. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with Nicole. Yes. So question number one, Nicole. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? To breathe underwater. Wow, Ooh. I'm into that one. That is a very on-brand superpower. Yeah, I like it. No scuba gear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Garrett, did you get that? Da -da -da -da. Wow. <laughs> Bravo, sir. Oh, my God. I'm so impressed. We're in business. Oh, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. I wait, wait. for her. I oh. did, 
Yeah, he did. I did two answers. He did put it though. The top answer was breathe underwater, but she would also love to have a superpower of healing the world. I almost put that, but I didn't know. Oh, but he, he got it. He got it. He definitely he got, it. Got, it. got it. Extra credit. Oh my God. He knows her even better than just yeah, the answer. More than she knows herself. Okay, so Garrett, your superpower is to breathe underwater? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, and Nicole, did you get that? <laughs> oh, I put the fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the entire conversation about flying dreams. It was <laughs> screwed her. It was a mulligan. Yeah, he was did. trying. He was a red herring for oh, her. Oh man! The game. Oh, Nicole, I feel for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're gonna get this next one for both of us. <laughs> All right, Nicole. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? A teacher. Excellent. Dreams come true. Teacher. Garrett. Wow. Very good. Garrett this is guy. nailing this. Okay. Oh gosh. And Garrett, how about you? When you were a child, what did you want to be? Architectural engineer. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Oh, wow. She got it. Whoa. <laughs> Architectural By the way, engineer. I just want to tell you guys, this is the strongest out of the gate performance yes. we've ever had <laughs> by far. Yeah. This is very strong. Yeah. Okay. Like down to the word. It's very strange. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I feel competitive about your relationship now. <laughs> I thought we had the best relationship. All right, next question. Architectural engineer as a child. And, that's and most impressive. people would have said architect, like barely would have been in this sort of sphere. You got it right on the nose. Anyway, oh, next question. Nicole, if you could only listen to one musician, band, or composer for the rest of your life, who would it be? Bob Marley. Nice. Excellent. Bob Marley. Oh, he got it. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. He is slaying this so do. far. Yeah, I didn't know which. I've, there's been so many. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Garrett, if you could only listen to one musician, band, or composer. You put Bob Marley too? That's not fair. Oh. <laughs> Bob Marley he put Bob Marley. I know, but I mean. But I, I should have said that because you always do, bring do that up. She Ooh, always, nice. She Strong. called it Deepak mode forever. She finally. <laughs> Graduated. I'm so young. Mode. <laughs> <laughs> this Deepak mode band right. you like? <laughs> okay, Depeche Mode, amazing guest. Amazing. Oh, Nicole, I feel I feel so bad because these are good. These are yeah. good answers. I'm he sorry. Put it too, and he knows it. Yeah, I should have. That one didn't come to my mind. Or just didn't he come never should've. plays Bob Marley. It's like, oh, yes, <laughs> to listen to. I've yeah. never heard him say, oh, put some Bob Marley on. Yeah, we used to I, I believe, way. Nicole, I believe yeah, that I she deserves that yeah. point, but she won't go. Maybe, maybe he's sabotaging her right yeah. now. I should have got that one. I should have got that. I got a, well, you did get it. You just didn't give it to her to give yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I gotta not say, like my, the one that I would play forever, but it's one that she would have guessed that I would play forever. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, which is a different way to play the game. You're yeah. playing to win, clearly. Yeah. I was expecting Philip Glass to come up. Oh, How yeah. How wrong I was. <laughs> oh, that was a producer choice. Yeah, but that soundtrack, man, oh, man, that's oh, so yeah, good. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. Question number four, Nicole. It's your last meal on earth. What do you order? I just put fresh pasta, some sort of fresh pasta. Fresh pasta! Wow. Oh I just put pasta. You just put pasta. This is nuts. This is nuts. This is completely He's nuts. It's four for she four. Blew it on wow. this one. What'd you put? She <laughs> <laughs> and and he's gloating. This is the greatest <laughs> performance I've ever seen. Garrett, it's your last meal on earth. What do you order? I'll go for some oh rice, and beans. Beans and rice. Oh, yeah. rice. rice and beans. Rice and beans. Your he last also, meal on earth is rice he and beans. Also loves pot roast. So pot roast. Oh, but he does love beans and rice. Whatever. From when I was in Mexico, I lived in Mexico. It's gonna be a sad night in the McNamara house tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, I don't know if I've ever seen such a discrepancy. In, I mean, in, in, in boxing, you could always say the guy could knock the other one out. I'm afraid to say, Nicole, you have been destroyed. <laughs> Okay. I, last... I pay more attention when she's telling me things. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Question number five, Nicole. What is your first, what was your first ever job? I was being really generous, but he got it without any way. It's babysitting, but it was, I also talk about the candy shop, but he put baby. You worked at a candy shop? Babysit. Babysit. Yeah, you got it. Oh my God. I, I, this is Garrett. <laughs> You, you've gotten the first ever five. This is the first ever of all time. 
No yeah, one has well, ever gotten to this next one. He got. <laughs> he got Wait, is there a next one? <laughs> oh well, no. We'll see if she gets it. But oh, I'm a little. Oh, I'm more it. curious about. I want to know about this candy shop. You, I almost feel sold. like we have to keep going to see if we can. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stump him. So, where, did you sell candy? Uh, I worked at a candy store. <laughs> You, what That's people don't know about routine. Nicole, when I met her, she was running Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> and she he left right before he got arrested, but she could get the, the tapes without the black spots. He, so. <laughs> he loves to tell stories. He loves to tell stories. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm because dead. I'm from South Florida. From Florida. But what he doesn't realize is I was like 12 years old. <laughs> Taking a t- oh, an interesting oh, turn there. Okay, <laughs> Nicole, I'm rooting for you. I want you to pull no, ahead. I I- yeah. oh, okay, okay. So, Garrett, your first ever job. Breaking boxes. Wait, wait, wait. Breaking boxes? Breaking down boxes. At my at father's the- restaurant. The, yeah. Oh, she got it. Crushing boxes. Wow. Excellent. Okay. Okay, wow. So that's, uh, that's a respectable I- two. I'm Floored, Garrett. You just got, you just got the first ever five out of five. You are the, the now the trophy you are holder, the, the, the king. Yes, of, the of winner of game. the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Yay! <laughs> but I think I lost because I might not get lucky tonight. Now. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, thank you for being such wonderful sports, giving us our first ever five out of five and joining us all the way from Portugal. We're really honored to have you. Yeah, this you. is great. Thank we you so much. We can't wait to watch season I, two. I had a great time. I was really excited about this. Just to have fun and not be so oh. serious about it. <laughs> waves, Good. Waves. We had a ton of fun and you guys were just wonderful. So thank you so much. Go. I, I apologize to the children for us keeping you oh, for so man. long. Thank you, you guys, guys so much. Thank you. We had a thank blast you. with you. Have a great one. You too. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Ooh, five out of five. I'm speechless. <sighs> he made it seem easy, but it's not. It is not. So Andy, did that live up to the expectations? Exceeded. Exceeded. I mean, this, this guy is one of my heroes. Yeah. It's not every day you get to meet one of your heroes. Actually, they warn against meeting your heroes in yes, general. <laughs> it's true. And I meet, I meet a lot of famous people, but they're not my heroes. Yeah. And, and as you said, I met him and he exceeded. Yeah. Interesting, funny, affable, just uh, I'm, I'm into. And a Garrett total Huckman. nut. He's a he's total a, lunatic. He's a nut and I like it. <laughs> yes. He's yeah. a good, he's the best kind of nut. Yeah. Which like, is, which is, in my opinion, an almond, the king of nuts. <laughs> I would like to say that there is no athlete on Earth, and, and my, on Earth, <laughs> there's no athlete on the galactic planet of Earth or Earth <laughs> that I would rather meet than Garrett McNamara. I mean, you have to understand, like, he is conquering with ease something that to me is more terrifying than anything I can imagine. It is kind of incredible how like their their mindset around it just seems to be so matter of fact but the average human it could not fathom doing that even if they have the skills it's like it takes us it's almost like you need a certain chip or you need to miss a certain chip to do what he does yes he's missing a chip and he's (laughs) gaining a chip he has more (laughs) chips and fewer chips than he should have but i will i I just want to make it clear for people who are watching this scratching their head like who is this guy i want to make this clear if you've ever seen the movie the perfect storm which I've seen multiple times, yes. even though it's not even that good, but I've seen it like and the waves 10 are times. CG. The waves are CGI. Yeah. Yeah. There is a the the big money shot of Perfect Storm is this hundred foot wave yeah. that's that capsizes the boat and that's the end of it. And that actually happened in real. It's a true story. Approximately a hundred foot wave. This guy gets on a surfboard <laughs> with no equip, nothing, just his body and a surfboard. And literally surfs that wave in the perfect storm. So next time you see the perfect storm, <laughs> look at that wave and imagine a guy surfing it. And 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 anyone who's out there saying, "Oh, who Garrett McNamara is not that big a deal," just oh. think about that for a second. <laughs> and behind every great man is a great woman. I found it fascinating. She has such confidence in him. Talk about wind beneath your wings. Can you imagine if you had her? 
like as that support system. I don't think he could have done what he not and not taking anything away from him. I'm yeah. sure he would have surfed some. Big no, I think he somewhere. would admit it. I don't think he would have done. I know he wouldn't have gone to Nazare and done what he did. Without I don't her. think he could have done it to the level he did it without yeah. her. She is in fact encouraging. She's like, why aren't you? Why aren't you surfing that way? It's so crazy. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting it's at so all. Crazy. I was expecting her to say that she like has nightmares and it's something None that, of that bothers her. Yeah. It's fascinating. You know, he really found his perfect partner in crime. He in found that. his perfect partner. Because I think a lot of partners would have an issue with this. <laughs> Well, she knows him better than anybody does. Anyone who just watches his videos or watches this documentary, mm. she knows him better than anyone. Yeah. And she seems to know that he's safest out there with these giant waves as opposed to picking up kids, driving a car, <laughs> going to a store, which I totally get. Yeah. And we have to trust her. Yeah. But there was one other thing about them that I find super fascinating to come at from like a conversation standpoint because i'm sure there are going to be people out there who are like what they were both married like Ugh. that's you know that's wrong blah 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 yeah. and i think it really touches on the fact that like i said it's not always squeaky clean nope how how things that are ultimately right begin mm -hmm. would it have been more kosher to have called up their significant others and, and like completely gotten divorced and then date. Sure. But it's also, no. you don't know yet. It's just, a, it's you, complicated relationships, especially the onset of relationships can often be be messy. Beautiful endings often have messy beginnings. Often. Mm -hmm. You and I, when we met, were both on breaks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've ever revealed that before. No breaks. Yeah. We not were, broken up breaks. Yeah. We were both on breaks mm -hmm. and I, so I don't feel like I cheated by going right. with you, but at the same time, was I fully, completely unattached, completely single? No. Yeah. And I think it's a testament to how strong well, our relationship is and also their relationship is that you, you sometimes have to make uncomfortable choices and sacrifices to, to choose the thing that you know is right well so that's the thing sometimes you have to do a wrong thing for what feels right for mm -hmm. you and unfortunately there will be probably collateral damage in that and and definitely hurt but you only live once it's you know there is no it's tough there's no perfect way to come together in a relationship and maybe there is for some people but it's often a little messier than i think people especially americans think and i love that their relationship touches on that you know they were they were ultimately right 11 mm -hmm. years later they're they are unbelievably right. in love mm -hmm. two kids a third on the way mm -hmm. five out of five newlywed game five out of five on the newlywed game it's uh i can see people wanting us to talk about this which is why i'm mentioning it mm -hmm. but i i it's you know it's more of a conversation in my opinion i don't think that it's anyone's place to cast judgment on choices people make for themselves, especially if it does ultimately end up being right for their own happiness. Yeah. Love wins. And all is fair in love and war. I have a few cliches here. Those are two. But um, it, you can do things in love that outside of love would seem like crimes. Mm -hmm. And that's because love always wins. You have to always go towards love. And I think that that's what happened. It's such a... You're such a hopeless romantic. That's a very really new am. way of looking at Deep it. Down. It also adds that much more weight to their answers to the question, what beliefs about relationships have changed? Mm -hmm. Knowing that they were both married when they met, mm -hmm. you know, your twin flame does exist. You and know, I hate to say it, but in the end, as much as it may hurt the, the, left, the partners who were left, in the end, it's probably better for them One, too. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's the other thing. Thank you for touching on that. Yes, it hurts. One hundred percent. We've we've all been broken up with, and it hurts a hell of a lot more when you're broken up with for someone else, and you're married, and it's yeah. tough. But I actually do believe in the long run that uh, it's a gift, even it's, though it's you like might. heart surgery without anesthesia. It's going to hurt like crazy, but in the end, it's going to save your life. I believe that. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to be in that relationship no. either. Spend the rest of your life in, in a relationship where both people are unsatisfied. Yeah. It's no good. Yeah. I'm, I'm already having remorse over not touching on age. Ugh, 
God. It's funny. I always have regrets. I always have regrets no matter what we do. There's always like, oh, I should have asked this. But they seemed open to talking about it. And I totally dropped the ball. But they have a big age difference. I'm yeah. very, ugh, I should have asked. Shit. <laughs> I, but I think that, I don't know if you needed to ask, but that's the obvious question. What did they expect to get asked? You know, on, yeah, yeah, they were like, no. oh, what's, what, no. talk about the age difference. Of no. course, someone's going to ask about that. But they, they joked about it. It yeah. came up many times. They were like, oh, well, it's kind of guy. like we've joked about it, too. It's like, what do you want us to say? Like, I'm sure they wish the age difference was less, just as I absolutely and we both absolutely wish that the age difference was less. You know, sure. it's not like people want to be in a relationship with a big age difference. Yeah. It's it, just that you fall in love happens. with the person. You fall in love with the person you fall in love with. You can't pick everything. That's why I said like you don't you don't check. You don't say, oh, this person checks off all the boxes. You mm -hmm. listen to your heart. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. I think it's the kind of thing that when you have been in that kind of relationship or are in that kind of relationship with a big age difference, mm -hmm. that's when you know that you don't need to ask the question. And that's why it didn't occur to me. I'm retroactively wishing I had because I know some people will be like, I wish you had asked about the age difference. But at the end of the day, I forgot to ask because I know what a non-issue it is Could when you're in the relationship. that they were joking about it. It's not yeah. an issue. So what's the answer? Okay, what's the answer they're looking for? Yeah. Hey, Garrett and Nicole, what do you think about your age difference? <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. There's nothing we like more. It's my, I wake up every morning and I'm so thankful I'm this yeah. much older than her. Like, who cares about that answer? Yeah. What's the answer? Tell me, what is an answer that's satisfying to you? It's what I just said, honestly, which is that, look, age is a number. And do we wish it was less of an age difference? Huh. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Yeah. Yes. I 100% wish that you were younger or I not that I was older. I wish okay. you were younger. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> but just... You know, what, what are you going to do? That's not something I can change. And is that going to be the reason why I don't pursue what I think is the most special I, relationship I I've ever think, found? I think it's a pointless question with a pointless answer. Anyway, a lot of great conversations coming out of this one. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how the Shandys respond. Me too. Cause... I love that we, this just feels so apt that we're breaking away from the bachelor sphere. And going right into big waves. <laughs> <laughs> no segue. Like on the surface, it probably seems like a really random love fest, but yep. it's actually the most us love fest we've ever had. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I hope people recognize. I that. hope people recognize that, too. Yeah. And before we wrap, we really must encourage the Shandies, if they have not already, to check out 100 Foot Wave on HBO. Mm -hmm. If your mind is not blown by this, I don't know what would blow your mind, no, honestly. Please see this. The music is great. Well, yes, I was about to say for my fellow musicians out there, the entire soundtrack is composed by Philip Glass. Yes, so one of the greats. You're in good hands. It's a haunting, beautiful, exciting, fascinating documentary. You have to see it. <laughs> um, I, even if you're not obsessed with waves, even if you don't care at all about waves. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. And be sure to check out this couple on Instagram. It's at McNamara underscore S. So that's M-C-N-A-M-A-R-A -A -A underscore S. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you can keep Dear Shandy in business by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, following us on Instagram, telling your friends, leaving us iTunes ratings and reviews, and generally doing all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy and consume. And on that note, I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.